This episode of Fine Scale Modelers New Product Rundown features IBG Models KTO Rosimek, Ravel Germany's Flower Class Corvette, Hobby Boss's Hawk Mark 127, and Tacom's Type 69. Welcome to New Product Rundown, our twice monthly look at the latest kits. I'm Aaron Skinner. And I'm Elizabeth Nash. Boy, do we have a great show for you today. Yeah, no kidding. Guys, I'm really excited about the lineup we have, starting with IBG Models 135th scale KTO Rosimek. This Polish armored vehicle licensed from Finnish manufacturer Patria has been deployed to Afghanistan. Where it earned the sobriquet, the Green Devil, from Taliban fighters who feared its durability and firepower. Rosimek is Polish for Wolverine. Suspended on eight wheels, like the American Striker and German Boxer, this 24-ton vehicle can exceed 60 miles per hour. And carry six troops and three crew. This is the first plastic model of the Rosimek. Yeah, and it's clear that it's a labor of love for IBG, who's loaded it with detail. Complementing the terrific exterior, exterior with a comprehensive interior. The hull parts show great detail inside and out. Highlighted by fine recessed panel lines, sharp bolts, and nicely molded non-skid patches. There's a terrific engine with a multi-part block, transmission, and cooling system. The chassis comprises separate two-part side rails and frame elements and sandwich the four differentials. The wheels come in three parts, all plastic. The outer tread for each is a single part with no visible mold seams. And inner and outer faces complete with hubs, brakes, and sidewall stenciling. Drive axles, shocks, and double wishbone arms finish the suspension. In the troop compartment are six seats for soldiers, a driver's compartment with molded instruments, a steering wheel, and a commander's position with communication and computer equipment. Hatches on top and in the rear of the vehicle can be posed open to display the interior. And they give plenty of scope for dioramas. The turret is a beautiful piece of work from the external part with the same outstanding detail as the hull. To the interior, which features a full basket with floor, ring, side mesh, controls, seats, and more. The slide molded barrel for the Bushmaster II main gun has an open muzzle brake. And connects to a breech and other details inside the turret. Clear parts provide head and taillight lenses as well as the driver's windshield and gunner's optics. One of the unique features of Rosamix in Afghanistan were anti-RPG screens around the hull. Plastic provides the brackets and the frames. The mesh itself comes in photo etch. Decals and five view painting diagrams provide markings for three Polish Army Rosimix in desert camouflage. If you like wheeled armor as much as I do, you won't be disappointed by IBG's Rosimix with its quality and detail. Definitely exciting for fans of modern armor. Next, we have a Flower Class Corvette in 1 to 144 scale from Ravel, Germany. 267 of these little ships were built during World War II to help protect the North Atlantic convoys from the U-boat menace. Armed with a deck gun and depth charges, Flower Class Corvettes fought their way through terrible weather to protect the merchant ships that were keeping England supplied. The experiences of the, the crew in these ships were made famous in Nicholas Montserrat's book, The Cruel Sea. One of my favorite reads, I highly recommend it. This isn't Ravel's first Flower Class Corvette. The company has reissued Matchbox's classic 172nd scale kit at least three times. Including once as HMCS Snowberry, the ship that this all new kit represents. The hull halves are nicely molded with plate detail and portholes with eyebrow rain gutters. A bulkhead bolsters the 18 inch hull and separates the fore and aft decks. A stand locks into tabs in the keel. The decks feature molded planks for the wooden sections and non-skid walkways on the metal. Small parts such as railings, plumbing, and davits are cleanly molded and have fine attachment points. The 4-inch main gun is molded in halves so the muzzle will be open. There's more non-skid on the gun platform and separate hatches for the engine room skylight. Clear parts are provided for the skylight glass as well as the bridge and lantern housing for the radar. Ravel did a nice job on the bridge walls, wings, and supports. The ship abounds with small details such as the depth charges, boats, rafts, smoke dispensers, stowage boxes, bollards, and more. A spool of thread is provided for rigging and flexible railings, but many modelers will replace it with fishing line or stretch sprue. A small decal sheet provides hull numbers, draft marks, turret art, and a Royal Navy ensign. A color three view shows painting instructions for HMCS Snowberry in the Atlantic in May 1943. Ravel's new full-color instructions also give detailed paint callouts throughout and are very easy to follow. In the box, Ravel's kit looks like it's the basis for a really good Flower Class Corvette. And it'll take up less space on the shelf so you can build more than one. Hmm, great idea. Our third kit today is near and dear to Aaron's heart, Hobby Boss's 148th scale Hawk T Mark 127. This is the Australian version of BAE's versatile trainer. It's used by the RAAF as a lead-in fighter trainer for future Hornet pilots. The fuselage is split between the forward and rear sections. It's marked by recessed panel lines and raised rivets around the engine section. 
The separate forward fuselage halves capture the Mark 127's nose to good effect. Designed to resemble FA-18 cockpits, the Mark 127's flight deck differs from other Hawks. The kit parts replicate Australian Hawk panels and consoles, including the multifunction displays. Multi-part ejection seats finish the cockpit. Photo etch harnesses and D-rings are included. The intakes are molded as single pieces with fine lips and terminate with solid blinking plates. The speed brake can be posed deployed and there's a detail bay insert for the rear fuselage. The separate tail planes feature fine recessed panel lines and rudder outlines. The main wheel wells include structural details and plumbing. They fit into the one-piece lower wing which sets the shallow dihedral. Individual flap actuators detail the undersides but the flaps aren't posable. Unfortunately, the wings reveal a problem. Too many fences. The largest should be there, but the three inboard don't show up in any photos. Unfortunate, but they should be easily removed with sanding and rescribing. The tires are weighted. And there's the option to add underwing pylons and stores, but check references for what's appropriate. Options include two types of Sidewinder air-to-air -air missiles, rocket pods, M117 bombs, fuel tanks, and a centerline gun pod. In addition to the thin canopy and windshield, clear plastic supplies gun sight and lights. Decals provide markings for four Australian Hawks, two each from 76 and 79 squadrons. Two are colorful anniversary schemes for the squadrons. Stencils detail the airframes and ordnance. Despite the minor issues, this kit looks like it should build into a nice replica. We'll be right back after this message. This is your model. This is your model on drugs. Wait, that's not it. Let's try that again. This is your model. This is your model with fine scale modeler. Just say no to unused workbenches. Say yes to FSM. Call or log on now to get the help you need to kick the habit of unfinished models. Finally today we have Tacom's 135th scale type 69-2. This is one of several T-54 and T-55 related kits released by Tacom recently. Developed from the Type 59, it includes improvements from the T-62 captured from the Soviet Union during the 1969 border conflicts. Armed with a 100mm rifled main gun, the Type 69-2 seen here was built in very large numbers and widely exported to countries in Asia, Africa and the Middle East. Tacom's reputation for quality is epitomized by the Type 69. The lower hull shows nicely molded detail. The suspension and running gear comprises separate road wheel arms and sharp idlers, drive sprockets and road wheels. Tires for the road wheels are separate. Individual link tracks complete the running gear. The turret ring is bracketed by engine deck and glasses plate sections with fine bolts and weld seams. Fender skirts, tools and an unditching log detail the hull. Typical of the T-55s, the fenders are dressed with stowage boxes, fuel panniers, tools, and the exhaust. The turret features the same well-molded weld seams, bolts, and attachment points as the hull. The main gun is molded in halves, and there's a coaxial spotlight. The hatches are separate, but there is no interior. There is a terrific-looking Dushka machine gun for the roof mount. More stuff details the turret, including smoke launchers. And distinctive wraparound stowage baskets slash bar armor. Clear parts provide lights and periscopes. The mantlet dust cover is vinyl with good fabric folds. Photo etch metal provides engine grills, brackets, attachment straps, and light guards. Decals and color profiles by Ammo of Meg Jimenez give six marking options. Three Iraqi from the 1991 Gulf War, an Iranian tank captured from Iraq, a new Iraq Army tank, and a tie vehicle. This looks like another terrific release from Tacom that should be a fun build. Look for a review of it, the Rosameg, and the Flower Class Corvette in upcoming issues of Fine Scale Modeler magazine. And you can see more new products in our September issue on sale now. Thanks for visiting FineScale.com. I'm Elizabeth Nash. And I'm Better Off Dead. We'll see you next time. Puppy died, puppy died, puppy died. <laughs>